Ah, oh, we love to talk Tide with Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. Got to join him and the rest of the staff over there on touchdownalabama.com for your football and March Madness needs with the Crimson Tide, of course, in play this week on the hard floor. But uh, we're going to stick to football here, Stephen. We appreciate you being here as always. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to stick to football here, Mark, but I am excited about the March Madness, just the big dance coming up here on Friday. Crimson Tide in that West bracket, taking on the winner of the play-in game between Notre Dame and Rutgers. Hopefully this team can get hot and win six games, survive in advance, but we'll see. Uh, Ja'Cory Brooks uh, has been a guy that we've talked about uh, quite a bit during the offseason here in regards to that wide receiver position being wide open and guys needing to step up. And, of course, he showed uh, himself worthy in uh, that final drive of the Auburn game. But, of course, still some development needed there. Unfortunately, he and two other contributors will not be active or for spring practice. According to Coach Saban on Friday of last week, Mark, to open spring camp, uh, Saban mentioned that uh, uh, Ja'Cory Brooks, Darian Dalcourt on the offensive line, and Keanu Colt, a reserve outside linebacker, will all be out for spring ball. This is due to some small injuries they sustained uh, during the latter portion of the 2021 season, or these could have been injuries that happened in the early portion of the offseason prior to the fourth quarter program. So Brooks, Dalcourt, and Colt all out. But it opens up opportunities for other guys to take advantage at the wide receiver position with Brooks out. You got to think this opens up Jermaine Burton, uh, the transfer from Georgia to get more acclimated with Bryce Young. This opens up an opportunity for a J.I. Hall, for him to get uh, clean chemistry there with Young, uh, JoJo Earl, Christian Leary, Trayshawn Holden, all of these guys have a big chance here with Brooks out. And even two freshmen, Aaron Anderson and Kendrick Law, who both enrolled as enrollees, they have a chance as well in this mixture here. When you look at Darian Dalcourt being out, this further increases Seth McLaughlin as the guy at center on the offensive line. He came in. Uh, we played in 10 games last season, started three games in the postseason versus Georgia, uh, Cincinnati, and Georgia again in the national championship and played well, did not give up a sack in all three of those games. And then uh, as the reserve linebacker Keanu Colt out, you can look at Chris Braswell, big shot for him to grow more, uh, Quindarius Robinson, but also the two five stars in uh, Jeremiah Alexander and Giad Campbell. So Saban mentioned day one, a lot of competition at various spots. You, you hate to have the injuries here at the open spring camp, but better for these to happen in the spring uh, than the fall. So that's where we stand right now on the injury front. Folks, we talked tied with Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama. Not only join him on Touchdown Alabama, but um, in my own words, right here on YouTube, his show, in my own words, call-in show, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Stephen, I checked it out for a few minutes last night. He had a tremendous uh, conversation with uh, Jalen Armour Davis as he prefers, prepares for the NFL draft. It was awesome. I mean, J.A.D. is this one guy that doesn't talk a whole lot when he does speak. He dropped some knowledge bombs here and there, and he kind of spoke on how 2021 should not be viewed as a negative season for Alabama. Of course, not winning the national championship, coming up short. Obviously, people are going to be frustrated. They're going to be disappointed. But this is the same Alabama team that coming in, people thought it would be a down season for the Crimson Tide. You're more so led by two sophomores and Bryce Young and Will Anderson versus the traditional junior, senior, uh, graduate student leadership there. But still, this was a team that won the SEC, has a Heisman Trophy winner, got to the college football playoff, won a playoff game, was right there with Georgia in the national championship game. Unfortunately, the injuries took its toll, and you have to give Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs credit. They came out prepared to play, ready to play. Stetson Bennett made some big throws when you needed him to do so. Uh, Georgia was able to run the football late in that game to kind of put the game away, and the Georgia defense made plays, created pressure to Bryce Young, frustrated him a little bit, created some turnovers. So, I mean, even though – it was not the result that you wanted. Uh, Armour Davis understanding, hey, you know, Nick Saban's about how do you face adversity? 
And despite all that happened, still the SEC champion. You still produced a Heisman Trophy winner. And you still got to the college football playoff. And you were right there in that championship game. Steven, you brought up Jermaine Burton a few minutes ago. When you put him together with Jameer Gibbs and Eli Ricks, I don't know that there's a school across the country. Certainly there have been other schools that have brought in, you know, upwards of 10 and 15 transfers. But in terms of the quality at the top at their positions, um, it's it's tough to beat those three in terms of uh, quality talent coming in through the transfer portal. Saban was very pleased with all three of these guys the first day of practice, called all of them extremely impressive. I mean, you look at uh, Jermaine Burton, just first and foremost, two years at Georgia, caught 53 passes, 901 yards, eight touchdowns. As you just look at him at 6'2", a little bit over 200 pounds, it's will he be a slot guy? Will he be an outside receiver? And just how quickly can that connection form between he and Bryce Young? And on day one of practice, that connection looked pretty good. I mean, Bryce putting the ball out there, Burton right there out the route, catching the football, getting up and down the field, cutting, making plays there with his legs and his hands catching the ball. So that's going to be fun to watch, especially when you discuss Bama has had success getting receivers from a, of a transfer portal or having transfers come in prior to the portal in discussing Richard Mullaney, Gary Dieter. Of course, this past season, we saw in one year what Jamison Williams provided the program. So, I mean, Saban excited about Jermaine Burton. Jameer Gibbs watched him, the footwork, the speed, the power, the contact balance, the cutback ability. The guy has it all at the running back position, and he comes in here trying to contend for the Heisman Trophy. So it's going to be hard to keep that young man off the field. And then Eli Ricks coming over from LSU, uh, we know 16 games for the Tigers, had a shoulder injury this past season, but 31 tackles, uh, six career pass breakups, five interceptions, four of those in his freshman year with the Tigers in 2020. You have to think, he would be one of the two starting corners, outside corners for Alabama. I mean, the opposite guy could be, whether it's Kool-Aid McKinstry, Kyrie Jackson, Terry on, uh, Terry on Arnold, just the freshman, Trey Quinn Fagans, come in here and turn things on their head. But uh, as far as the three transfers go, Saban highly impressed with those three on the first day of practice. Folks, please subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football, best discussion, debate, and analysis across the nation. And, of course, get on over to touchdownalabama.com. And also, in my own words, it's uh, Stephen M. Smith's show each and every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Lock it in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 Central. Give Stephen a call. Talk Tide. Talk SEC. All right. Uh, Stephen, when we look at uh, the offensive line, um, Certainly pulled together late in the season, but not a banner season uh, for the Tide last year. But uh, you're eyeing a, a number of open spots, especially at the tackle position. Well, Coach Saban on Friday of last week, Mark, it was like he was passing around the collection plate at church. The number of names he missed it there uh, for the offensive line, primarily at both tackle spots. He said, hey, there's a lot of competition here. There's a lot of bodies here. But there's a lot of competition here, and we're trying to get the best, most consistent five, most dominant-looking five on the field. And whether that takes taking the guy from guard and moving him to tackle or taking a traditional tackle or, or, and putting him at guard, doesn't matter what the case may be. We're trying to get the best five on the field. And so right now, he listed Kendall Randolph, J.C. Latham, Tommy Brockermeyer, Damian George, Javion Cohan, you know, all five of those guys, he talked about it. They can be at guard or they can be at tackle. He said Javion Cohan could be a tackle. Uh, Damian George can be a guard or tackle. J.C. Latham, guard or tackle. Tommy Brockermeyer, looking for him at tackle. It's just what will the finished product be when you look at this entire offensive line? Because to me, I think the one spot set in stone – it's that center position where Seth McLaughlin is concerned. I think he's done enough from last season to submit him at that spot to start spring ball, and then most importantly, the upcoming season. Now, at right guard, uh, Emil Ekior Jr. is still at that spot. Does he remain there? Remains to be seen. Uh, but both offensive tackle positions is what Saban truly harped on 
that first day of practice last week. And with the names being ripped off there, it's going to be intriguing to look at who takes command at both of those spots. Bryce Young was sacked 39 times a season ago. You definitely want to have that number decreased. So it's going to be a fun, intriguing situation to tell who takes both of those tackle spots when you depart or graduate Evan Neal and Chris Owens off. Now, Stephen, to say that the coaching staff and the list of names that have coached under Nick Saban during his tenure at Alabama is impressive is a ridiculous understatement uh, to, to not only have NFL assistants regularly on the staff, but NFL head coaches, you know, come through as Saban assistants. But in particular, it's early in the process. But uh, as you told me before we started record, uh, Nick Saban, he, he feels good about this uh, 22 staff. Very confident, and he, he used a word, uh, Mark. He said this is the most balanced staff he's had in a long time. I'm like, huh, balanced. And uh, I guess the reason why he said that was uh, in years past, Alabama has had, uh, you know, maybe five coaches devoted to the defensive side and four and a half coaches on offense. And that half a coach would be this guy would coach tight ends and special teams. He would work sort of double duty. And that can be kind of overwhelming at times. And yes, Alabama has had moments earlier in the Saban era where it's done that and they've had success. But in the latter year, Saban is starting to understand, let me get guys where their core strengths are this certain position. And so now you've got five guys devoted solely to offense when you've got, you know, Robert Gillespie solely at running backs, uh, Joe Cox solely at tight ends, giving all of his attention to tight ends, uh, Doug, uh, uh, Bill O'Brien solely devoted to calling the offense, but also work with quarterbacks, Eric Wolford solely devoted to the offensive line, Coleman Hutzler, yes, he's got the special teams and linebackers also, but I guess Saban kind of looks at special teams as a defense part too, in a sense. And then defensively, now you have Freddie Roach, solely devoted defensive line, uh, Pete Golding, solely devoted to inside linebackers and calling the defense, Charles Kelly, solely with safeties, Chavaris Robinson, solely with cornerbacks. Saban has gotten a staff where everybody is concretely at a position where they know I'm getting the best out of my area. I'm getting the best out of my cubicle. So I guess in Saban's mind, Bama did not quite have that the last few years. And there was kind of an imbalance there. So now with everybody in a, in a, in a uh, strategic spot, he feels like, okay, we've got more balance. We've got more guys in areas where they know this is where I have an expertise in. This is where I have my, this is where I specialize in. This is what I know I'm the best at. So I, I guess speaking at it from that perspective, Saban feels like we got more balance. We got more creativity. We got more knowledge. We got guys that know this is where I'm really good at. Steven knows his stuff. We've talked tied with him for a long, long time here at the Voice of College Football. Head on over to touchdownalabama.com. In my own words, that's Steven's show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 Central. Give him a call. Talk Alabama football with him. And, uh, Stephen, we appreciate the breakdown as always. And enjoy a little March Madness, too. I will do so. Appreciate it, Mark.